Hello and welcome to Fearless DIY Music. My name is Tristan Lass and today I'd like to talk about Fender Pro Junior amps. Um, I guess the first place to start is why I ever owned one in the first place. Uh, I was playing a gig uh, in like 2004. It's just a bar gig. It was a favor to some people. It's like, hey, will you come down and do a set? And I said, sure. I showed up, had my trusty 65 showman head which promptly blew up that night and I had to borrow the other band's rig and it did not go well for me because I was just completely unfamiliar with the rig the show went poorly and I decided okay well the 65 showman is kind of my sound but I need a backup so I bought this amp right here as a backup it was 400 bucks it's a Fender Pro Junior. It's got a tone control, a volume control. Power section is uh, two EL84s, and it has two 12AX7s in the preamp. And all it has is a volume and a tone control and an on-off switch. Super simple. It also has a jack, so you can unplug the speaker and jack a speaker cabinet in. So, back in those days, I used the 4x12 along with this head. So. I always kept this in the van and if I needed it I ran out and grabbed it and I would just patch it in real quick uh, plug in a 4x12 and it would it would totally push the 4x12 even though this is just a 15 watt class A uh, tube amp. So anyway that's how I came to own the first one and then when I started doing more studio stuff as my studio grew in Portland I bought a second one so that I could run them in stereo. And for years, I used that as a cool, like, studio setup. I would just have them running in stereo. That way, I could get a nice field in the mix. And they had slightly different tones, just being that they are tube amps. So every tube amp has a slightly different sound, no matter how they're specced. Uh, but what I'm here to talk about today is, is that these are a great platform for doing modifications. I did not know that when I bought them. Over the past couple years, I have tinkered with them, specifically this one. This one has been heavily modded. This one has been lightly modded. So I'd like to kind of go through a little bit of what I've done, especially to this amp, and then we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison, and it may give people some ideas about what they might want to do if they buy one of these relatively inexpensive and very small tube amps. These are just 10-inch speakers, really small cabinets, uh, I really like them for their portability. They are loud, very loud. I've never had an application where one of these was not loud enough playing with drummers or in, a, in, in the studio, they're almost too loud sometimes. But the cool thing about these is if you are more of like an apartment dweller, or if you have a small space and you have to keep things quiet, you can like build a sound box, put this inside with an SM57 and you can record like full bore, really good tube amp sounds if that's what you're after. Anyway, let's uh, start off before I go into the mods by saying if you are going to work on a tube amp, make sure that you discharge your filter caps. You do not want to get hit with voltage. That is not something that you want to deal with. So as my safety message to you, if you're going to do anything with a tube amp, you need to make sure that you discharge the filter caps, make sure there's no voltage in any of the circuits. All right, let's get to it. One of the most common mods that people do to these amps is they change the bias. These are famous for uh, frying uh, the power tubes. I've had it happen. I've had it happen to both amps at various times where the power tubes should not have gone. They weren't that old, but they ended up frying. And the way that you change that is you go to your R29 resistor on the circuit board and you replace that with, um, it comes with a 15K and if you put it up to a 20K resistor, you will get a lot more life out of your tubes. And I should preface this by saying that these are perf board second generation Pro Juniors. So these were both manufactured in 2004. That being said, these second generation Pro Juniors are super easy to work on. Accessing, taking off the back access panel, you have the whole perf board right there. And it's all 
through components. So it's just through hole uh, soldered in components. So you just unsolder and then solder in your fresh one. And if you don't know how to solder, you probably won't be modding a tube amp anytime soon. So learn how to solder before you do that. But back to what I was saying, you changed the R29 resistor from a 15K to a 20K, and then I've never had any issues with my power tube since. I've never had to change them since, and that's been fantastic for me. Um, another mod that is commonly done is you go to your R6 resistor, you pop that one out, and uh, I lowered mine from a 56K down to a 20K. And what that does is it gives you more clean headroom. The amp won't break up as quickly. These amps do break up when they're pushed. Um, I use them as a pedal platform, so I don't want them to break up. Now this one, I have not done that mod to. This one I have, so it has a lot more clean headroom than this amp does. Another great mod uh, is to change up the tone stack. This one is unmodded. This one is heavily modded. There are three capacitors that you can change in a Pro Junior. They are C1, C2, and C10. And what I did on this amp is I changed the stock values. From C1, I changed to a 0.022K. C2, I changed to a 0.047. And C10, I changed also to a 0.047. And what that did to my tone stack, and these are not like drastic changes in the stock values, but what it did is it darkened this amp up. So this amp has more headroom, and this amp has a darker tone. Because I find that these amps can be kind of brittle if, they're un if you don't mess with the tone stack. But the cool thing is I left this one unmodded because I wanted to have a bright one and a dark one, especially for stereo recording. So anyway, there are some, there, there, there's some other mod things that I want to talk about on these amps that I think are kind of ridiculous. If you go to the Frommel site, there's a thing called the Frommel Mods for um, the Fender Pro Junior. And they'll sell you a kit for like 80 bucks that you replace all of the capacitors in the, in the circuit and a few resistors and it's a lot of work. I mean, you, you're basically taking half the perf board off and putting all this stuff in. They claim that it's going to, you know, transform the amp. Given that these are in a small box and they have 10 inch speakers, I think that's kind of highly unnecessary and it, it, it's also a lot of cost. And uh, there's too many things that could go wrong during it. So I opted not to do that mod kit. And I think that it's kind of uh, excessive especially given just the nature of these amps. You're not going to transform this into, you know, a larger tube amp with a lot more headroom that has multiple speakers or is running through a speaker cabinet of some sort. So anyway, I opt just to keep them relatively stock. Like I said, changing the tone stack, changing the, uh, the gain resistor, and changing the headroom resistor, totally worth it. I did do one mod to this amp that was not worth it. Uh, there's a little purple wire uh, by the uh, output jack for the speaker, and it's the negative feedback loop. And I put a little switch in, and some people said, oh, this makes a big difference. You put this switch in, and it'll interrupt that, that uh, negative feedback loop wire, or it'll put it back into the circuit. I found that to have negligible value. I would not do that mod again. And like I said, it hasn't been on, done on this one. It has been done on this one. And currently, it's not engaged on this amp. And then the final mod I wanted to talk about is I put a greenback, a Celestian greenback speaker. It's just the 10 inch, just like the stock. But I put a greenback in this one and it did warm it up. And once again, you know, got rid of some of that kind of like high end sizzle that this amp still retains with its stock speaker. So anyway, I think that now what I would like to do is just go ahead and I'll just do a little bit of strumming through both and you can kind of hear the differences. And then, uh, yeah, we'll go from there. I'm playing my uh, Catalpa Wood Strat. It's featured in another video. You should check it out at some point. I'll, pro I'll link it at the end of this video just so that if you're interested. Uh, for the sake of this demonstration and keeping things simple, I am just playing on the neck pickup and the bridge pickup. 
uh, the bridge pickup is in humbucker mode. All right, let's start with the largely unmodded amp. We'll call A. All right, and then we'll switch over to the highly modded amp. go back to the unmodded amp and we'll go ahead and go to the bridge humbucker all right and we'll switch over to the modded amp Let's go back to the unmodded amp. Back to unmodded. And so in general, what I take away from the sounds of these two amps is that this one has more low end thump and it has a little bit more warmth to it. And I feel like it has a little bit more clarity. This one is bright and it feels a little thinner to me. And depending on your application, either one would work fine. Um, like I said, if I had it to do all over again, I wouldn't change a thing. I'm totally happy with the tone of this amp. I'm totally happy with the tone of this amp as well. I love having both. If I were to only have one, I would keep the more highly modded amp because I think that the warmth and the characteristics there are great. And it's always easy to kind of boost your treble end with uh, either a dirt pedal or an EQ pedal. I like the darker character of the amp, and I think that greenback speaker also is really helping with a lot of that. So, in conclusion, you know, my, my take on the Fender Pro Junior is, is that it is a very common amp. There's a lot of them out there. You can get them cheap. You can get them for $350, the second generation one, all day long on reverb. And if you just need a tube amp, just to have a tube amp, that you can use as both a combo and you can use as a head by running it into a cabinet. They're a great option. The simplicity of the controls is good. There's no option paralysis whatsoever with these. Um, I mean, you've got a tone control, volume control, and a power switch. That is it. They're super simple. I think they sound great. And uh, they're easy to mod. I mean, changing the tone stack and changing those resistors Literally, it's like a half hour of your time and a soldering iron. And the parts are negligible. I mean, that's like $10 in parts at the most. And that's if you're just buying individuals. I mean, you can buy bulk stuff and get even cheaper than that. You could probably do it for five bucks and then the cost of your solder. So anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. If you've made it this far, I'd like to encourage you to please subscribe to the channel. Things are going well here, but the more subscribers I have, the more cool things I can do in the future. Um, I really look forward to getting some comments on this video as well. If you have a Fender Pro Junior that you've modded, I'd love to hear about it. And uh, once again, hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you next time with more comment and content and other things that you'll be interested in watching. All right, you take care.